A while back, I posted a video about reclaiming uh, wood for making furniture. Well, I ended up having to take that wood to a fellow that runs a kiln and also has a sawmill for him to dry the wood out and to make sure that there were no bugs in it. Right here behind me, not sure how dark it is, but from here up is that lumber, plus a little extra that I brought along with it just to make sure it was treated for bugs. So I just wanted to sort of give you a shot inside of the kiln and um, talk a little bit about it and then in the rest of the video I hopefully will be able to show you what I make out of the wood. Here's a shot of the kiln. It measures 15 feet long and 12 feet wide. It's a cinder block construction with insulation underneath the concrete slab and then mica chips poured into the walls and then also heavily insulated in the ceiling. Here's the shot of the inside and you can see all the boards just piled up with that center divider, I think you call it a baffle, which um, has fans mounted in it and that keeps air moving in a circular uh, way throughout the kiln where the air flows across and then down the sides and then is pushed between the boards where they're all spaced out. This kiln is electric and it's basically a heat pump that warms up the room and that's its control panel in a sort of a little side closet room with access to the other side of the kiln and as it heats up the moisture is uh, comes out of the wood and then some dehumidifiers um, condense it down and pour it right out of a pipe out the side of the building and here we are just getting the boards that I'm bringing to him out of the back of my truck. The fellow that owns this kiln, he also has a sawmill. He is a cabinet maker doing a lot of kitchen cabinets and uh, other types of furniture, and so he has the need to saw and dry his own wood. Um, he has a pretty large portable sawmill that he does all of his sawing on, and then this kiln and dries all of his lumber. And in addition, he'll mill up your logs and dry the lumber in his kiln, and uh, I mainly just use his kiln to make sure there's no bugs in the wood. And here's the wood that I'm going to load up into the kiln once I've replaced it. All the boards are laid on sh perpendicular strips called stickers with about a half inch gap in between each board. And this allows for airflow in between the boards and beneath each, I mean in between each layer. And here I am, I'm going to go ahead and put the stickers and they're placed about, I'd say, 16 inches apart, pretty close, just to make sure the uh, boards stay nice and even. So I just finished uh, loading up the kiln. And what I ended up adding into it today was a mixture of white pine, yellow pine, and some western cedar. This is all reclaimed from different sources. The western cedar came from a porch that was torn down, and I was lucky enough to find it on the side of the road waiting for the trash. And the yellow and white pine came from an old sawmill that had shut down, and this was old leftover wood that had been grown over with weeds. And um, so I was able to end up getting all this at uh, next to nothing. Uh, slash free. Um, and the stack of wood I added in here today is starts here and goes up, but these boards on average are 12 feet uh, long to 14 feet long. So with all these boards added in, this kiln's going to get, the uh, door's going to get shut and turned back on. It had already been on for the, the previous little pile that I just pulled out up to about 150 degrees, to, and that kills all the bugs. And um, we just opened it up briefly to grab my wood and then load this wood in. Door's going to get shut, kiln's going to get turned back on. And in about two weeks, once the kiln has been shut off and cooled down, I'm going to come right back up here and pick this stuff up. But with all this loaded up, it's time to take the wood that I'm picking up today and turn it into furniture. Here's a shot of pulling out of his driveway. You can see his wood lot there with his logs and then some stacks of wood. And then there's this kiln with the sawmill beside it. This guy's sawmill is in a pretty nice location. So uh, as I'm driving out of here, I thought I'd just so show some shots of the road coming in. It's one of my favorite parts about coming up here is just the drive. The For a while, I'm kind of on windy mountain roads. And then I turn off onto a gravel road. And I'm on that for quite a while, which I'm on now. And then it opens up to a nice place that's just a road beside the river for a while on this gravel road and I'm getting to it now so I'm going to go ahead and kind of pan over there and just give you some shots of the scenery. I feel like this video really sums up my whole reason for my lifestyle of being a craftsman making furniture. Um, just to be able to take part of the day and stop working on a table you're building or something and just drive off and pick up your lumber and you're driving in a beautiful area and um, meeting and talking with other craftsmen. It's really a nice freedom that I, I, I wouldn't give up for anything.
Since I got my lumber back from the kiln, I was able to finish up one of my farm tables. This particular table measures 8 feet long and 4 feet wide with hand turned legs and uh, the wood that I got from the kiln I used for the top and then the aprons. Normally I use my 1 inch boards, the 1 inch decking boards that you see me use in other videos for the aprons, but this particular customer would, uh, wanted the same boards used on the top to be used on the aprons and sort of a more raw finish. The sort of grade finish on the base is achieved just with a watery mix of uh, some brown and orange and black dyes that I mix up and just sort of brush over the whole thing to give it a more of a naturally aged look. Um, the legs were turned on my lathe. I used my duplicator first to rough them out. You can see that in action in uh, one of my videos on my channel. And then I come back in and I clean it up with a skew chisel afterwards just to get it to its final profile. Um, so uh, I guess that pretty much wraps this video up. If you like these types of videos of seeing the kiln and the uh, sawmills and just different types of videos, sort of the behind the scenes of woodworking, let me know in the comments below. Um, you can also send me messages if you have any questions, but be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I'll also be posting up some pictures of more of these tables on my Facebook, so go ahead and go over there and check them out there and uh, be sure to push the like button. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.